what is up my tiny little light bulbs. <sighs> trying to drink more water. This is my first bottle of the day, so I'm not trying too hard. Hi, if you didn't know, my name is Light. Welcome back to my channel where we sometimes do magical things. If you haven't followed me for a while or if you just didn't know to begin with, I have been a witch for about two years, so not too long. I don't consider myself a baby witch anymore. I'm like a medium-sized witch. I'm like a preteen witch at this point, I'd say. So I like vaguely know what I'm talking about. Right? Right, right, I do. No, I do. I believe in myself. 2020 is about believing in yourself. <sighs> okay, if you watched my last video where I made my ritual vision witchy board thing, part of the ritual was putting a bunch of sigils that I made on my board. First things first, what in the hecko is a sigil? A sigil is basically just a symbol. It's just another word for a symbol, a fancy word for a symbol. Um, that invokes a certain energy. They're one of the easiest forms of magic and they're still pretty powerful depending on how much time you spend with them. I don't know, it's pretty easy. You just make a symbol and then it does magic for you. Great. I actually freaking love sigils. They're very versatile. Like they can be super small. Um, you can like write them like on your skin or you can like have them up around your house. You can bury them in your backyard. Um, you can cook with sigils. Like if you're baking a cake, you could like frost the sigil onto your cake before you spread it. Like you can do so many things with sigil. Sigil magic is the most versatile. Like most magic, everyone has their own way of doing things. Before I got into sigils, I came by probably like 30 different ways of making sigils. Um, and this is the one that stood out to me. I've kind of made it my own. So I hope you guys like it. Here's how I make sigils. First things first is you're gonna need to want something. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna do like a simple one that I think actually everyone should do. Like if you're new to witchcraft, this will help a lot. My spells or rituals, whatever you do more, manifest easily. This is a good one because it'll cover every other spell you do or whatever other magic you do. Whatever you do, just make sure it is a present statement as if it's already happening and do not do not use the words I wish, I want, or I need. If you use statements like that, the universe doesn't understand like the concept of time in the way that we do. So if you say I want or I wish, it's just going to manifest your desire for it, not the actual thing, if that makes any sense at all. First thing that I do is I take out all the vowels. So A-E-I-O-U, I'm gonna cross all of them out. I leave Y's, we can keep Y's, they're sweet, whatever. And then left over, we have all these consonants, all these continents. Okay, so I'm left with this little jumble. Next, what I'm gonna do is take out all the repeating letters. So if there's two M's, I'm gonna take out the second N. If there's two L's, I'm gonna take out one of those L's, the S, the Y, the L. So I have M, Y, S, P, L, N, F, T. Okay, perfect, ta-da. So these are the letters you're going to work with. Now, some people, they use like this chart with like numbers or they like draw squiggles between the numbers. All It's too much for me. I can't do it. I can't memorize the chart order, so I'm not gonna do it. So with these letters, I literally just take all the letters and like mush them together. So you can start off like with a circle to work within. I don't usually do that. Um, the sigils that I made for my vision board, I just went for it. Um, but I'll try to do it in a circle. So you can get creative with it. I'm just gonna start with the M. Oh wow, that's ugly, whatever. I'm doing my best, guys. So there's the M for the Y. I can use like this middle piece. There's the Y, the S, we'll just do like a little squiggle. L, oh, this is turning out to be harder than I thought. Um, okay, we're gonna skip that, we're gonna go to the T. And you just kind of keep playing with it until you see what you like. I don't really like the circle method. I feel like it contains me and I don't want it to contain me. So I'm going to go over here and do it again. If there's like an S or something that's more difficult, I usually start with that and that could be my base. So there's the S. We'll do a little T. Make this into an F. Make that into an L. And all the letters can be upside down, they can be sideways, obviously. <laughs> That's what I like a lot about this, is like you can literally just be creative and do whatever the heck you want. Oh, 
Okay, so here's the base that has all of these letters in it. You can kind of see like the M, the F, and the N. Um, so I'm going to add like little designs to it to conceal the letters a little bit more. You want to get it to the point that you uh, can't see the letters and you don't know what this sigil means anymore. Okay, I don't know, I'm just spitballing at this point, um, but this is basically what I have so far. Um, I don't feel too strongly about it, so I would usually um, try again and find something that I like really like and resonates for me. Another thing to keep in mind is like the markings that you're doing, you want it to have like an energy of what you're trying to manifest. So. My spells manifest easily. I added this little arrow, like things are growing, they're going up into the universe, becoming reality. Um, I wouldn't do like a down arrow, like, because in my mind that's like, things are declining, things are getting worse, so I did an up arrow. All right, I'm gonna do one more time and actually take my time with it. I actually really like this one so this is one I would actually use this one is good but this one just feels right to me so okay so I made my sigil the next two things that I'm gonna do is I need to charge the sigil and then I need to dispose of the sigil I didn't dispose of the sigils on my vision board because I don't mind their like slow burners like I want them to be there and I want them to manifest throughout the year but if it's something like this my spells manifest easily I need this to be true right now <laughs> but first we must charge it so how do you charge sigils one way I learned of today is to work out with your sigil like go on a jog or a walk or like do some push-ups um, and like get some of your sweat on the sigil getting your DNA will like charge it and and make it specific to you. Um, I hadn't heard of that one before, but I really like it. That's a good idea. Another way to charge it or charge anything really a good way is with sex magic. So either with uh, just yourself or with a partner um, and having the sigil near you and in your mind when you're finishing. Um, and if you can, like using like sweat or other bodily fluids um, to get your DNA on the sigil will really make a difference. Mostly what I do to charge things is I just like spend time with the sigil. <laughs> like I'll hold it like to my forehead and like meditate for a second and like give it a little smooch, get my lipstick on it, like form a connection with it, you know? People might look at you crazy when you're talking to you and smooching on um, a piece of paper with scribblings on it, but their life isn't filled with magic, now is it? Who's the real winner here? Or another way that I charge things um, and what I do with my vision board is I use a wand. I just use it and like focus my energy through the wand um, to manifest and I just kind of like trace the sigil, get to know it, you know? Then once it's charged, um, you can do like what I'm doing with my vision board, more long-term goals. Um, keep it around you where you can see. I don't remember what any of the sigils mean, so it's a form of disposing just because I don't remember but they're still kept around so they can work long term but something like the one I drew today where you need it like immediately you want to actually dispose of it and I think the best way to do that is to burn it burning outside is the easiest because then the ashes are outside they go back to mother nature and you don't have to do anything else or if you want to burn it inside keep the ashes um, and sprinkle that um, more into your spell work. You can carve it into a candle, burn down the candle all the way. You can write it on the bottom of your shoes and just let it like wither away. Or you can do the same thing, like draw it on your skin um, and wait for it to like wash off. There's a million things you could do, but the one thing I wouldn't recommend you doing is actually throwing it away. <laughs> um, don't put anything you use for spells in the trash. I feel like that not only negates your spell, but kind of makes it like backfire. It's like you're throwing away your intention. I don't know, that's what it means to me. But there's other ways to get rid of things. Like if you wanna burn it and let the ashes like run down the drain and imagine it like flowing into the universe. Or you can even bury your sigil outside. Imagine it's a seed and gonna grow and blossom. Whatever it is, whatever makes sense in your head usually is what's gonna work because it's your intention that matters. For this little guy, I'm probably gonna cut him out, burn him and sprinkle the ashes um, all over my altar. Just so whenever I'm working with my altar items, they know 
this stuff's gonna manifest and it's gonna be easy peasy, honey. And that's it, that's how I make sigils. Ta-da! Very fancy, very cool. I know. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you go out to the world and create all kinds of beautiful, magical sigils and, and what am I saying? Thank you for watching is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.